Hi, I'm Tealish, and you're watching Coffee and Clicks. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe and click on the link tree found in the description of this video for links to my media content. Enjoy, and don't forget, wake up and smell the clicks. Hi, I'm Tealish, and you're watching Coffee and Clicks. Uh, today, we welcome Dan Powell uh, from Click from the Clicks Off podcast, um, and uh, we're going to be talking about his recent win at the Rock Mega event. We're also going to be talking about uh, the re the recently um, sold at Gen Con, Con, Con convention exclusives. So we'll be talking about those, um, and we're just going to have a fun episode with with Dan today. Um, don't forget everybody if you're if you if you like my content if you enjoy my content please like and subscribe I really appreciate it and uh, let's get right into it so um Dan um, how you doing how's it how's everything going uh, everything's going well um, thanks for having me back on I was I was thinking uh, the, the last time I was on it was early pandemic yeah and uh, um, you know, uh, now we're, I don't know, not early pandemic. You know, so hopefully, uh, hopefully the, hopefully your world has as much hope in it as, uh, as it did then. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I mean, I, I mean, I was going to talk about this later, but I'm going to, I'm excited to, uh, play more in person hero clicks games than, um, from the last time that we that you were on the show um you know i think uh uh you know we're hopeful that we can get together and play um and do all sorts of in-person activities and things so i'm really excited for that um yeah also, same here yeah it's, it's been nice yeah and uh dan so you you recently were at an in-person event it was uh, in huntsville alabama it was uh, the rock mega event um a tournament with 28 people uh, at Lucky Dice Cafe, and you went eight and zero, oh, and you yeah. won the event with with a with a team that has been coined Bat Doom. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how that team works? What's on that team and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, it, it's funny. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a project manager manager um, in telecommunications for my job. Um, so a lot of times a project or an initiative will have a name, right? Like, uh, you know, uh, you come up with the internal names for a project within a corporation. So I've been known to name my team. So it was funny to, that we came up with the team name Bat Doom. That, that was not its original name. Um, so just a little bit of uh, thought process there. There There is a process to even naming the team uh, in my head at least. So it was, uh, you know, we, we went around Lat Bats or uh, doom bats kind of like a play on doom bot um but uh but bat doom is what we settled on so um so just kind of a basic rundown of the team it, it's 75 point doom the annihilating conqueror so lots of switches into other teams uh, other dooms uh amanda waller from jlu um to give batman prime the future keyword to bring him into doom the annihilating conquerors latveria uh, Sky Tyrant, um, 53 Flash at 30 for charge, of course. And then uh, TK Flash, uh, 20 on the second one. Then Molecule Man, uh, Alchemical Fire, and um, Waldo Arms for the objects. Okay. So, um, 
you know, so it's a plus seven Latveria theme team. And then I do play the Reign of Terror map bonus uh, for free because uh, it is a Lat Latveria theme. Um, and so, so, yeah, go ahead. But, yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, we'll... well, I was going to ask, so so why do you choose um, those particular equipments? Right. So uh, the initial version of the team that I played back in early July um, had the Power Gym on Sky Tyrant. Uh, so I switched to the Waldo arms on him, one for the extra reach, uh, two because he's nearly always quaking. So the extra damage from the power gem was very rarely, very rarely relevant. Um, and then there are situations on the Waldo arms where you roll for the free attack or the free end cap. Um, and that allows Sky Tyrant to reposition again. Uh, so Sky Tyrant's movement power, um, you know, he's got flurry and full range charge, full movement charge. And then whenever he hits, he can move up to half his, um, move half his, um, movement value. So that's typically 12 on the first flurry. Um, and then he can reposition and then make the free attack from the walled arms if you roll a five or six and then he can reposition again mm -hmm. um okay so you know that that's it's really walled arms were just more versatile and functional um alchemical fire um most matchups that goes on batman um because that uh, the um the negative two attack the um, I call it the splash damage. Um, there's a splash damage option um, on the alchemical fire, but namely the fire token it is huge to use with Batman's uh, mind control. Okay, and uh, can you pick which on uh, the, alchem the alchemical fire? Can you pick which one you start on, or no, how does, oh, you have to roll? So you can pick which one you start on. You don't get to use that one though. Okay. So you pick, so typically with Batman, you will pick start on penetrating damage. And then if you win map, that typically gives you, you will you get two turns because you have to equip it. But typically it gives you two turns to try to get onto fire uh, damage or um, the fire token. Um, so, you know, a uh, is it a 3-4? I'd have to look at it. I think it's a 3-4, uh, moves it twice, and then... Uh, like a five six does it well it does it as well because you can rotate the other way um so you have like over like i think it's like a 70 percent chance to get on fire tokens within um two turns um but the fact that you're mind controlling across the map and then say sticking that fire token on a um i don't know like a dark phoenix um it is really is really really powerful, really really huge. Um, but that, that's why that's mainly why the alchemical fires on there. Um, there are some use cases for say uh, Doom sixty seven, the six arm Doom to get it, um, or even like Doom the Annihilating Conqueror if you keep him in for Pulse Wave. Um, but uh, th those are the those are the main uh, the main choice would be Batman uh, for most matchups. Okay. Um, and, uh, so, I mean, the team, I was reading a little bit about your, your article on click stuff on the, on the website. Um, and, uh, you said that, uh, you included Sky Tyrant on the team to make it hard for your opponent coming in close or at range, because if they sit back, then they get punished by Batman. And if they come in close, they get punished by Sky Tyrant. Right. So the, the idea there is if I win map, right, I go to a wide open map, right? Um, so, you know, that allows for big TK lines for Sky Tyrant, but mainly it allows Batman to just do his thing, right? So mind control has been very powerful since the 2017 rule change, and it's even more powerful now in the 2021 rules change. Um, so just 40 point Batman taking your team and making it fight you, you know, getting to use things like, you know, exploit and psi blast and, you know, all those all those powers that you can combo with mind control now is rather is is rather huge, right? But in the situation too, whenever I lose map, um, 
Batman, because if I, so let's, let's say I lose map, right, and I don't have Batman, well, there's no punishment for them to just take me to a wide open map as well. So if they take me to a uh, wide open map, right, then I get punished because I lost map. But if we go to, say, one of the more closed in maps, you know, your King's Tombs, your Ancient Holds, then I have a chance to get set up for Sky Tyrant, all because Batman's just on the team. Yeah. No, that's uh, it's clever. I mean, I like I like how you have like a double threat there. Um, and uh, also, I saw you wrote a little bit in your article about how why you chose Molecule Man over Dark Phoenix. Right, yeah. So five of my seven pieces have stealth. Uh, and there's very few stealth-busting ranged attackers. Um, so Molecule Man doing Smoke Cloud for free. I think that's the best version of Smoke Cloud is free. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, back, he, him just laying smoke and then typically just placing a one barrier in front of um, Sky Tyrant that protected me from most ranged attacks. Um, so you weren't actually using the full barrier function of Molecule Man too often. You were just using his smoke cloud. Right, not, yeah, most most of the time, right? Um, in one of my matchups, especially against Alex uh, Kuz on the data mine, um, Molecule Man was having to barrier power action barrier and then smoke cloud but those hallways are only too wide so as long as i rolled a two or higher um you know i was able to protect both my left and right side um on that map um to be able to to be able to stop him from coming in from either side so yeah yeah and so most of the time i'm only relying on like a one or a two uh, to be able to stop the front line from getting ranged. No, that's really good. Uh, that's, I mean, when you don't have to rely on on big numbers with the D six, then you you pretty much always have um, some sort of protection that you need. I mean, especially right. since most of the characters have stealth, so it right. really helps. Um, so um, and and you went eight and zero with that team. Um. I mean, what, how did your experience go at the tournament? Like, who did you play against? How did the games go? Um, so just, you know, the, um, you know, round one's always the, uh, the, the, the wild card round for me um, at, at these larger events. Um, so my round one was against um, uh, a gentleman named Austin uh, who's playing a mystical team. And um, man, I, I, I almost just, I felt bad for Doom sixty seven existing in that matchup. Okay. <laughs> um, so he was he was playing the Doctor Fate clones, um, and then uh, Blackheart, and, and then DJ Doom. Um, so the uh, the the Fates, and then you know Blackheart with leadership. He had five actions on the team, right. and just by me going, here's a Doom sixty seven. You're now going from five to three, and. Uh, um, so that, that really slowed him down. He won map and, uh, took me to the Widowmaker's layer. So I couldn't, that was one of those examples. He didn't have full map reach in general, but then he took me to a map where Batman wasn't going to be able to just mind control his team. Um, so, you know, that was one where, you know, Sky Tyrant, man, just, he's a nuclear option. Uh, with the flashes tk i went to tk flash on the second one all day um but man just uh, flash uh, to flash sending him out eight squares and then sky tyrant going 12 um uh, yeah 12 plus the uh, with the uh, waldo arms giant reach um is just i don't know it's just insane to me right is, like, is that what you were doing you were like alpha striking across the board with him or? yeah I mean, yeah, it's just, you know, you start in square two, you TK out eight, you go 11, and you've got the 12th square of reach um, from the Waldo arms, and, and that's their starting area. So uh, there, there's very few maps that hinder Sky Tyrant that much that you can't just TK him out and he charges the whole way. Mm -hmm. um, 
so you know, I outfit him right. He moved up a little bit. He equipped. And he moved up. Um, you know, uh, I went in there, started taking stuff down because that keeps the pressure on, right? You know, Sky Tyrant goes out, you know, does his charges uh, or does his flurry. And then he flies back, right? So, and most of the time he's getting resurrection tokens, right? Because he's pinging something small. Austin had something stuff that was small. Um, so he gets lots of resurrection tokens, even against his mystics team ability, you know, pinging him down. Um, so that, that was, you know, that's pretty much it, right? I mean, I was just pew, 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 zooming in, zooming out. Um, and then Austin sent out his black card and black card's very, very good. Right. So a lot of the questions that I received is black card as good as he was hyped to be. Uh, and I can tell you going through this matchups that yeah, black card was phenomenal. He's very, very hard to take down. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, just quick round two, you know, I won map against an Illuminati swap out. Uh, I really liked Malcolm's team. Um, but I was able to just mind control his team. He didn't have any barrier on his swap out pieces. Um, so Batman just had his way with him. Um, you know, he got Emperor Gladiator across the map. And then I started, you know, working on Emperor Gladiator at that point. But, um, you know, Batman, once Batman started having his way initially with his team, you know, there, there's not a lot um, that I don't think Malcolm could have done in that situation. Um Round three was against Alex Kuz, a um, uh, Latveria team. Alex is one of my teammates. So he was playing the Shifting Focus Wonder Woman version of Latveria uh, with Prime Giganta. Um, so we went to Data Mine. You know, Alex, again, Alex couldn't take me outside. Um, you know, Alex is playing Doom's Castle, uh, Reign of Terror map bonus too. Um, but if he does, then I get his Giganta and I get his um dark phoenix to start wailing on his team even though he has molecule man um so you know we battled it out i had one opening with sky tyrant um and i used it on alex's team is basically what that match came down to there was one square and one turn i was able to use my reign of terror to go out and quake um alex's team and I mean, that was it, right? I mean, that, it sounds exciting. It was rather boring to do on stream because, yeah. I don't know, we spent 25 to 35 minutes just maneuvering pieces. Right. And there was one opening for the quake. Um, Jay Major um, was playing uh, Latveria again, with, but this time he was playing with Prime Gladiator, um, and he took us to King's Tomb. Um, that matchup was one of the ones where I practiced getting the full swing on Mala, on uh, Sky Tyrant. So I went out, flurried his flashes, or flurried his flash, um, and I got something else on that one too. But then I had the free attack on the Waldo Arms. So I moved the full 12, swung around the back side of the starting area, and then got his Dark Phoenix, and then moved six more. Mm -hmm. um, so you got so the free, that, you got the free attack with the Waldo Arms that in that in that particular attack. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that allowed me to swing around further and get Jay's Dark Phoenix to prevent retail. Um, so, you know, that one, I had actually miscalculated a square positioning, uh, just as a note there. Um, I should have moved up one more square with Sky Tyrant, and I could have got his Molecule Man. Uh, so Jay uh, almost won that match because I was five points down um, at that point. And because um, I, I, I carried Waller with me. So Sky Tyrant and waller and the arms are 95 points and i only took 90 points on my alpha um but luckily i was able to kind of aggressively move the rest of the team up and i was able to uh, take down some shiar guards and that sort of thing from jay um to get the points back in my favor um but that was a, that was a rough matchup um 
And then round five, I uh, played against Easton Brock. Um, and he was playing the double Professor X. Um, so that allows him to do the swap out twice. Okay. Which, which is like the swap out team's already like college algebra to me. <laughs> um, but like, yeah. I don't know, this is like, this is like master level physics, um, uh, math for me. And it's like, so how you do know, you they do have it all mapped out. Yeah. Go ahead. How do you do the swap twice? Because I mean, isn't it at the beginning of the game trigger? So like, that's right. I don't understand it really. So the beginning of the game triggers, right? The player that wins map gets to decide which order the triggers go into. Um, but in the case of Easton's team, it doesn't really matter. So one Professor X, you can't resolve them instantaneously, right? So Heroclix has a fundamental issue with triggers that need to resolve simultaneously. Um, I don't know if I'd call it an issue necessarily, but the way the game works, if multiple triggers happen, active player, you know, decides which triggers those go off into. Um, so... Uh, one Professor X does his swap out, things return to the sideline and then come off or go come off the sideline and then return to the sideline. Well, the other Professor X still has to trigger. But since the first Professor X is already triggered, those new figures are in play. So the second Professor X can take advantage of these newly swapped out figures and get advantage of those as well. Okay. So it provides you an additional layer of flexibility in your teams. Um, and if you were to ask me specifically why in Easton's instance he used to, um, you know, I can't particularly say. Um, but, uh, you know, he was he was doing the cable, right? So the big reason to do a lot of these is to take advantage of the XDPS cable. Yeah. Um, and, and his two clones, right? Was, so you he, can was he swapping out the original cable and keeping the clones or was he keeping all three? No, he was swapping out the original cable and then keeping the two clones. So, you know, the cable clone's very powerful. You know, you're paying, what, 25 points for him with the optional trait, uh, but you get two figures um, and then, you know, they have the one once per turn free TK um yeah so that really helps out your reach and they're what 11 for three i think um so they're they're good attackers as well um so that you know that that's really huge you know easton ends up on two two of the maggots the uh chase a and then the mimic prime um egg for barrier so uh, ultimately that matchup came down to easton didn't have leadership built in and um, Egg can only place four squares of barrier. Um, so all I had to do was just wait two turns, um, and then Egg couldn't barrier anymore. Um, so I, I teed off on the team with Batman and Sky Tyrant on Glen Grove Cemetery, um, and um, the Krokoan Revival... Oh man, that was rough. Um, because I scored, I killed, I KO'd Egg and Dr. Mora McTaggart with the, with the Sky Tyrant Quake, Quake. But I also reset a Maggot, got the Assassin, the Assassin reset another Maggot. So that Alpha ended up scoring me like 150 points. Oh wow, okay. Um, now... Easton came back and got my Tyrant, um, got my Black Vulcan and my two Assassins. Um, but at the end of the day, he was still only about a third up the map on his side. Um, so Batman was able to tee off a few more times um, before he was able to get to me. And then I ended the game by taking Mimic Prime down and... Um, I think a multiple man. Um, so it, it, it becomes, you know, that, that Kirkcoan can become pretty crazy. If I had, if I had, I mean, I was, I'm not complaining, but you know, if my dice were like insanely insane and I had taken down the maggots a little bit more on that alpha, I would have been probably, 
I could have, I, I had the opportunity to take him down twice more. Um, but I, I just didn't hit, I mean, which was fine. I mean, I took 150 again, I'm not complaining, but I mean, I could have taken him down twice more, which would have put me, I think right about 300 points, maybe a bit over. Um, and I, and I think some of that stuff became kind of insurmountable for his team. Um, so it was five and zero oh, uh, going out of Swiss, uh, then top eight. Um, the top eight was interesting. So he swapped into the Chase Emma from XDPS that provides that like bubble protection from range. Okay. Um, so even though I won map, Batman was pretty much useless. Um, so who was this? Whose team was this? Uh, this was uh, Andrew Mashburn. Okay. Um, so. That that one, um, you know, he didn't have full map reach with Blackheart because of my stealth. So um, Blackheart can go full map by himself um, with like a with a TK because uh, he can be TK'd, move, KO a guard, and then running shot. Um, so he can get the full map. Pretty much. I think he might even be able to do that by himself. He can just move and then running shot. Um, but not into stealth um, is, would be the point there. Um, so the big thing there was I got my first Quake was able to get the Dark Phoenix a guard. And it got Sky Tyrant onto his first stop click. Because Blackheart being able to generate those guards his own mastermind fodder is is pretty nutty um and um so it makes him really powerful this was the hardest matchup i had all day by far um so his black heart survived but then he healed him moved him out or moved him out um ko'd a guard and then charge flurried my team with a power gem black heart okay. with penetrating damage. Um, so he's thir 12 for six with, and I think he had a perplex on there somewhere too. Um, so he's like 13 for six. He just one shots my doom 67. Just absolutely nothing I can do about it. I think he takes like a, a flash uh, as well. So I'm like, I'm, I'm hurting at this point. Um, so, and he's packing Harry Leland. Um, so I, you know, I just absolutely just have to just, I have to go into Harry's negative modifiers mm -hmm. and just keep attacking Blackheart and Harry the best I can. Um, and it was a grind. I finally got Harry and then I finally got Blackheart thanks to having two Black Vulcans on my sideline. Um, you know the the poison getting getting around mastermind is what saved my saved my day basically um in that matchup but it was not easy it was not easy at all um top four was jay major again um that matchup came down to jay uh rolling a one he was relying on the barrier conversion power of uh, molecule man and he only rolled a one. Um, maybe a little anticlimactic to say that Sky Tyrant just flew in and took both his flashes, Molecule Man, Sky Tyrant, um, and then dealt four exploit damage to Doom 67. I had, like, I've been playing competitively for a six, this will be my sixth year going into my seventh year. And it is absolutely insane that a 50 point piece with a 10 point equipment nuked like 120 points of Jay's team. How is, how is he dealing that much damage? I mean, if he's quaking, he's only dealing two. Right. So the flashes are only two clicks. Okay. Dark Phoenix, he, because exploit combines with quake now. Right. So Dark Phoenix is only one click. Uh, um, Molecule Man is three clicks, but he's in line for both quakes. Because oh, um, of flurry, 
Yeah. There's a flurry, right? So you deal him two, then you deal him a one. And he's only three clicks. Right. And then Doom 67 only has impervious. So Quake, exploit. Um, so you deal him four damage to him. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right. So hit him with both Quakes. Um, and then Sky Tyrant goes, whoosh, All they've flies been. back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like... Uh, I was talking with PJ. PJ Bolin drove rode down with me, um, and you know, I was like, like, you know, all this swap out stuff is just way too hard, right? Like, I just can't mentally. It was hard enough for me to barrier all day. Barrier using a barrier tech all day is very draining, and then using swap math is very draining. Uh, but PJ was like, yeah, it's a kind of a low skill maneuver to just TK out Sky Tyrant and Quake. And I'm like, it is, right? It, it, I mean, I agree, it is. It's kind of low skill to just go TK, charge Quake. Yeah. Now you have to get it set up, right? And you have to take advantage of the opportunity like I did with Jay, only rolling a one on his barrier. But um, yeah, I mean, Jay rolled a one and I'm like, oh, well, here's a spot amongst all of your team that if I just fly this piece here carrying Amanda Waller, I can put your uh, flash. He had the the TK flash like I did, um, but uh, I put him in the pinch, right? So Sky Tyrant was here, and then Waller was behind him, so he didn't have a printed prob. Um, but uh, Sky Tyrant, you know, was on a, a thirteen attack because uh, I think he rolled a one, one two, and then uh, he shares a keyword. Because the Doom the Nihilating Conqueror removes Latveria, so it kind of removes the easy options for Sky Tyrant's keyword sharing. Um, but Sky Tyrant shares pass with the flashes. So my initial quakes have a 13 attack. Yeah. Um, and Dark Phoenix is only a 17, and the rest of the team's 18s. So I have to roll a 5 or a 4. He has 3 probs. I have 2 um, with theme teams. And, yeah, with with Waller and with Sky Tyrant. Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, it just you just literally sending out a nuclear missile, um, and just did blows you, up. Did you ever have an instance in the tournament where you sent out Sky Tyrant and then you missed? Um, I may have missed the second. I I, I missed the second quake on against andrew for sure um but i mean honestly no because i always had at least the one theme prob with sky tyrant and i think you know sky tyrant has a list of keywords that's a you know whatever right uh, you know a ton of them ton of relevant keywords and so he's always getting a plus one attack pretty much i think he always had a plus one attack on his quakes um, so I was rocking a 12, you know, Waller has a perplex to making him a 13. If he rolls a one or two on the Waldo arms, he's at a 14 most of the time on his quakes, you know, so I'm uh, pretty much always at a 12, um, you know, vast majority of the time is a 12, a good portion of the time is a 13. And then some really lucky instances where I rolled a one or a two, um, I'm at a 14 attack. Yeah, so um, be, because those chase those particular, I mean, I almost forgot about that trait. So the the uh, the secret six chases from Wonder Woman eighty, they all have this trait where if they share a keyword with an opposing figure that they're attacking, that they get plus one to their attack, right? Right. Okay. Yep, you got it. So uh, a lot of people past, forget. About, I think forget about that when they they're using it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Past is super relevant. Monster is super relevant. Um, you know, uh, there, there was, um, like against, um, uh, the first round Austin, um, I mean, I had passed with the Dr. Fates, uh -huh. um, but there was no Annihilating Conqueror, but his DJ Doom, um, has Latveria too. And my Sky Tyrant had Latveria. Mm -hmm. Um, so like there was just a lot of these teams where I, I shared a, I shared a, a keyword with them. Um, so he was just a 12 on, on the alpha. Um, so, uh, you know, unfortunately, thankfully I did not have like, you know, back-to-back -back 
you know, three or four critical misses in a row or three or four threes in a row. Uh, Cause most of the time I was only looking for fours. And so how did the final, the final matchup go with you? Um, a little anticlimactic. I won map and uh, Easton conceded. Okay. Okay. Because so, uh, you just had the advantage with um, as far as like reach and everything. Yeah, he, there was he, just there were there was no. I mean, he didn't change his team, right? Uh, and by me winning map, there's not much more he can do um, than last time, right? There's no. I mean, we you know he talked about it. I mean, Easton, you know, I'm sure your listeners are all aware how Easton's accolades over the years. Um, and, yeah, he's a great player. Yeah, yeah, and you know if Easton doesn't think he can win, then you know he. He's not going to play the match, right? I mean, why, why spend all of that energy? Right, right. And um, so I wanted to ask you. So I mean, we talked about all your matchups. Um, what are like the the other archetypes? I mean, you talked about a lot of the games that that you played in. Um, what other types of teams did you see at the tournament? There were twenty eight people there. I mean, what are the different like archetypes that are out there in the meta right now? Right. So the other overwhelming one that was successful in, in the top eight was the uh, the quote unquote gene bomb. Okay. Where Exodus, you know, mind controls, chase Jean Grey, and then she moves out, she attacks, and then you deal the five damage to her from the power gym equipped Exodus. Right. And then she just goes, <laughs> right um on her stop click right so she gets dealt five damage which puts her right on her stop click ability where she deals three damage to everyone within six squares um so that was the other huge archetype within the hellfire club swap outs um and i had practiced quite extensively against that one uh but i didn't have to face it directly because the beauty with swap out was if you lose map you can go to a different team so some of the swap outs that I faced had the gene option, um, but you know they lost map, so we went. They went to the black heart option, um, which he's he's super powerful. Okay, so um, you were when you were talking about those teams with black heart, they also had the gene bomb. Um, yeah, as an I think option, I think, but you I think have two to of them. Out. Yeah, I think the other two, uh, the other two of them did. Okay, and yeah. have you played against the gene bomb? I mean, what do you think about it? Do you think it's effective? I think it, I think it's very effective on the right team. Um, you know, I, 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 if I had to guess, I would say they're probably going to do something to fix uh, Exodus at some point, or or fix Gene um, at some point um, okay. in the future. I don't know that for sure, but that'd just be my guess. That's that's a pretty you know you don't. Uh, um, I, I, while I, so my, me personally, I don't really have much of a problem with my team facing it. If I lose map, yeah. uh, it, I do have to play hero clicks. Um, but I think for the overwhelming part of the community, um, if you lose map and the gene goes off, it doesn't feel like you're playing hero clicks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Exodus has a 13 attack, uh, when he's going to mind control gene, um, she just moves out, and if she misses her um, attack, then that's fine. She still just poofs. Three damage goes off, and you know you didn't have to roll, but just one set of dice, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so a lot of teams that it's really huge against, because then Jean can take her own action to pulse wave afterwards. Uh huh. And... Well, I think there's a lot of like different interactions where there's you know you mentioned like um, not feeling like hero clicks like you're not actually playing because there's so many options out there where there's like full map reach you know I mean you do have your like animal teams where you come across the board in Alpha Strike you know you have um, you know you have Batman Prime who can just sit back and shoot across the board which is you know. Um, I, I don't know, uh, like, did you think that, that the gene bomb, do you think that's like a, a problematic um, interaction in Heroclix, or do you think um, that it's okay? I mean, I, I don't know, because there's so many interactions like that. There's so many different things out there in Heroclix right now that are, are just kind of like 
you know, you go, you win map. Like Easton, you know, he he, he conceded because he lost map. So a lot of times when you win map, you just get that advantage where you can go all the way across the board. Um, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I, I think you're spot on pretty much, right? I, now, so I think that, yeah, the gene interaction probably becomes too too powerful like it's probably it's probably problematic because it deals damage for just existing pretty much right so i think that becomes problematic and i think the second part of your question is I, i'm not sure that you have a a good competitive team currently unless you can go full map alpha um secondly or unless you have enough barrier like I want to say like you probably at a minimum want to be able to make eight to 10 squares of barrier every turn. Um, if you're not going full map alpha. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like if your team can't get fully across the map in alpha strike, uh, it, that's, that's the name of the game right now. Um, unfortunately, I don't know. Maybe not unfortunately, but the, the meta always goes on to like this roller coaster, right? It's always a wave. A new set brings something in. A new mechanic brings something in. A new uh, errata brings something in. So the current wave we're riding is, you know, is full map Alpha Strike. Yeah. No, I did notice. I have noticed that. I've talked about it uh, in another episode as well. Um, but I mean, I think a lot of people are noticing the same thing, like that. That Alpha Alpha Strike. Alpha striking full map is is kind of the the only way to be competitive in in the meta right now. Um, I don't know if it's a healthy thing or if it's or if it's like indifferent, like if it's okay. Um, I mean, if you look at all the different archetypes that are out there, you have the animal team, you have the Justice League team, which can go full map with uh, Giganta, um, and uh, you have um, Scarab. You know, uh, you have um, Sky. You know, Sky Tyrants. Uh, you have. Yep. Uh, um, you know, Batman Prime, uh, you could, you have, uh, even like the monster, right? So there's the monster version of Scarab, Sky Tyrant and Doppelganger. Uh -huh. uh, that was, that was probably the other cool one that I saw. Um, but you know, I mean, a couple Scarabs, right. Gets Doppelganger or Sky Tyrant across the full map. So same, same idea. Yeah. I mean, and, and do you think that any of those teams is better than any of the other ones? Or do you think it's just kind of like a toss up? Oh man. So, you know, I, it's kind of a toss up. It, it's matchup. It's matchup. It's a matchup toss up. Um, so, but I think my, the only thing that I would say as an ad advantage to my team would be the map control that Batman provides. So, I haven't, I haven't actually piloted some of the other versions to see how well they do when they lose map, um, but that's that was the big thing with my team is the map control that Batman provides when you lose map. Um, so I, as far as a difference maker goes, probably not right because you're either, you know, getting, you know, uh, some of the X Men versions were using like uh, they use Jubilee. Um, when they win map with uh, Manta, um, are you familiar with that one? Um, no. So it says, it's a, um, so I'm not really familiar with the X Men um, swap out teams too much. I mean, I, I've seen that they use Maggot, but I, but I know I, I didn't even understand that too well because um, with Maggot, don't you want to car have someone carry them up the maggots up right. like a taxi? Um, but I haven't seen like a taxi on the team that could carry the maggots. So right. I'm, so I'm... A, a lot of times they're just an additional value add. Okay. Uh, the maggots are, but you've got a kind of a two different archetypes there where you can bring in Emperor Gladiator, uh, because Emperor Gladiator is just a beast. Is he as good as Blackheart? Or ooh, that <sighs> yes, um maybe i don't know blackheart's pretty sure i i kind of favor blackheart i'll just say that I, I i favor blackheart personally but i think emperor gladiator is pretty pretty strong um so you know they can bring in emperor gladiator uh if they win map they can bring in the jubilee 
from House of X. The one that turns into a dragon, kind of? The, like, giant, the giant you, you dragon. Go the, you go in the other world castle? That's right, yeah. And they can also bring in um, Manta, the Shi'ar L.E. from the WKO Prizing. Right, okay. That, that's an older so, piece, yeah. Okay. She's a little bit older piece, but she's got Shi'ar. Uh, she gives improved targeting, hindering, and enhancement, and the police team ability. Right. So... The giant dragon jubilee <laughs> has some pretty insane stats. So, like, you know, there's a TK, and then the jubilee is, you know, got enhancement and I think dual targets. Um, so, you know that that makes her really powerful. Let's go take a look at her real quick. Yeah, she's a she's eleven movement, eleven attack, four damage plus the enhancement, and then she goes to eight range. Uh huh. Um, that the big thing is that it ignores stealth. It was one of the, the, that particular team was kind of one of the biggest counters to my team. If it beat, if it won map against me. Uh, but luckily I didn't have to face that one. So, I mean, from what I'm, excuse me. So, um, from what I'm, uh, gathering is that, uh, and this is just like my own assessment, I guess, is that, you know, with, with the meta right now, a lot of teams are dependent on full map reach. And um, because of that, it's very important to go first. Um, yeah. And that that's, you know, even, you know, regardless of what team you're playing, what alpha striking team you're playing, it's really important to go first. However, where your team has an advantage, the Bat Doom team has an advantage, is that they don't necessarily have to go first. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You so, it. you know, where you can, if you can plan your team, if you're building a team and you can plan, plan your team so that, you know, you have an advantage if you go second or if you go first, then you have a step up. Right. Yeah. I mean, cause you know, in my example, right. I'll, I'll gladly go second if they put Batman outdoors. Right, I mean that—that's typically a pretty huge advantage for me. Right. Um. So. Um. But uh, yeah, I, I think you've got to have a plan for going second. Um, you've got to have a little bit of durability built built into your team. Um, and you know maybe the other thing I didn't touch on was uh, you know there I, I went to Doom sixty seven six out of the eight matches, um, and then in the two Eastern matches. Uh, Lord Doom um, was the play. So, um, you know, these teams that want to go first are building eight, nine, ten characters. Um, so as long as Lord Doom comes out and it, he can allow me to alpha, you know, e either alpha strike if I go first or survive their initial alpha yeah. without having to deal with the maggot pogs, then yeah. Lord Doom has has served his purpose. That's for like the matchup against like like Tyler's team, like the 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 animal team. Tyler uh, Easton in this particular tournament with the X Men um, team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because Maggot is a great figure, um, used on used on many different Alpha striking teams for sure. That's right. For sure. Um, but if you if you yeah, so Lord Doom, you know, for those of you who don't know, Lord Doom when he his. One of his traits is that if, if your opponent has more figures on their team than you do, then they can't produce bystanders, which kind of cuts off, you know, Maggot. So, yeah, Maggot, uh, and Master Mold. Um, oh, right, yeah. For making his 10 and 15 point pogs. Mm -hmm. um, oh, did you did you play any robot teams or were, were there anybody was there anybody playing robot at the, at the uh nobody there was a few players playing robot in the field um but alex did have uh master mold on his latveria team oh okay okay um and uh you know we, you know i didn't know we hadn't really touched on him yet but yeah again i think master mold at 25 points um is a very good value add piece well, let's look Great. at him. Let's let's actually look at um, the. I mean, I, 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 we talked a lot about uh, the Bat Doom team and your success at uh, the Rock um, 
yeah. the Rock Mega event. Let's take a look at some of the, and I, th I think the viewers at home might be excited to look at some of the uh, convention exclusives that just came out. Uh, they were selling them at Gen Con. Hey, uh, the last day of the cons today. We're recording on Sunday. Oh, so actually the con is is, is going on right now. Okay. Right. Um, so they're still selling. They're still selling the um, convention exclusives, <laughs> um, and I know a lot of people are trying to get their hands on them. Um, so let's take a look. I'm going to share my screen with you, and we'll look at Clicks Nexus um, and uh, who, with a site that really um, updates their they update their site regularly. And, Thank, thanks to them for putting these figures up on their website um, for us to look at. So this is uh, Wonder Woman Jump. But let's take a look at Master Mold first, though, because we were talking about Master Mold. Is that like, would you say that's your favorite of the con exclusives? Um, so, I, I mean, for competitive play, yes. Um, but now my personal favorite is the Ghost Rider with the Thanos. Yeah, that, I think everybody likes that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ex yeah, that one's cool. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. Um, I mean, I am a collector. I know we talk a lot about my competitive play, and that's probably what I'm most known for. But uh, I am also a collector. Uh, for those that want that can see this, this is part oh, I mean, of my HeroClix collection on this side of my screen. Sorry, I know you were sharing your screen there, but um, in the background of my Zoom here um, is, is part of my collection. So I am a collector at heart first. So that's 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 the reason I got into the game. Um, so that that's at that's at the deep part of my heart. So from that perspective, the uh, um, the uh, kind of Thanos and Ghost Rider is, is for me. Yeah, there's Ghost Rider. There's um, does Thanos have a uh, picture? Maybe not. Well, Thanos does not have a picture here, but I think he's got like some red um, lasers shooting out of his eyes. Um, that Thanos. Um, let's take a look at Master Mold first. I've talked about Master Mold in a previous video, so we don't have to talk about him in, in too much depth today. But uh, Master Mold is uh, being sold currently on the WizKids website as well. Um, so you should go check it out. I think they're restocking regularly. Um, so it, if, if it is sold, if you do go to the, the WizKids website and the Master Mold is sold out, keep checking because I think they re they're restocking them like on a weekly basis. Um, that's what I've heard. Um, this is Master Mold at 25 points. He's also, he also has a 75 point line, a 200 point line, and a 375 point line. Um, he has the future robot ruler and sentinel keywords. Um, 25 points. This is, I mean, I like to use them at 25. Yeah, yeah, um, same here. Just because I can include more things on my team. Even in, even in casual, I like to use them at 25 points. Um, he has a trait, Sentinel Creation, Power, Generate Any Number of Characters with the Sentinel and Robot Keywords, Not Named Master Mold, whose points, whose total points are equal to or less than the point dot total shown on the factory dial. Then turn the factory dial to click number one, and Master Mold gains Immobile until the end of your next turn. Okay, um, so he can generate... Um, Based on his factory dial, let me let me uh, bring up his factory dial. Yeah, I would I would just quickly add this. I do love him at two hundred points and how the factory dial interacts with him at two hundred points. Uh, but the as our discussion has gone on about uh, um, the Alpha Strike portion of the meta, yeah. um, there are so many things that can just if it, if he loses map, they come across slap him and he's dead yeah um well I, oh you mean if, if he's at 200 points yeah yeah if he's at 200 there's just so many things that can just slap him yeah. slap him to death okay <laughs> it's it, it's kind of sad um I, i'm very I'm, I'm very sad about it because that factory dial just can you can crank out like a cyclops sentinel every turn potentially a 50 point cyclops sentinel um the math is favorable for you to do that um it's just he is unfortunately fragile at 70 at uh, 200 points yeah um i actually did have a i mean i wouldn't call it a meta team but it is a team where you can include him at 25 points and he can still crank out um sentinels pretty fast 
um, because I had him on a on a team with uh, Karima with with the Sentinel team up card, which makes right. makes all the robots Sentinels, and then whenever the Sentinels hit, um, it cranks down the dot the factory dial. Right. So um, I, I I posted that it was like a, it was a um, it was a video that I posted on like a team a tealish team build with tealish video, um, but. Um, yeah, I mean, like, so, I mean, the, basically the idea behind Master Mold is that every time, uh, if you look at the, if you look at the factory dial, um, once per turn when an opposing character takes damage from an attack, if the attacker has a Sentinel and Robot keywords, click this dial once. Um, and then also if you hit leadership with Master Mold, you can click the dial once. Um, so, uh, you want to be able to, you want to keep hitting leadership with master mold, um, as much as you can. And then you see these numbers up here, the slots, the number slots for uh, in slot one for the, for the factory dial, um, depending on what click you're on, on the factory dial, you can bring in a Sentinel keyworded figure of that point value or less. So, um, like Dan, Dan said, uh, 50 points is the ideal number there because you can bring in a Cyclops Sentinel and Cyclops, Cyclops Sentinels are pretty dangerous. They, uh, they're pretty potent for 50 points. Um, that's my favorite one to bring in. Um, you know, you always have the option of bringing in the bystanders too. Um, these, I actually have them on my desk here. Uh, these guys here um, are the... Uh, are the bystanders for uh, Master Mold, um, and they're no slouches. They're no slouches. Uh, the one is, the one is um, running shot with ten attack, pensai, uh, six range, three damage, and the other one is uh, sidestep close combat expert, ten attack, three damage. So really, really eleven four if you're punching at close, and also also they hit, he has six range. Um, the, the, the close attack one is 10, 10 points and the, the range attack one is 15 points. So they yeah. do, they do give away points when they get KO'd, but it's, it's not really a big deal. You but know? Si sidestepping, cause they're giant, right? Are they, are they colossal? Oh yeah. I they're, they're actually colossal and they're flyers right. and they sidestep. So actually I heard this the other day that the Sentinel can, this, the, the, the bystanders can actually carry master mold. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, a sidestepping colossal, that's a two by two. There is, uh, there is so much synergy there, like just for being able to carry, right. Cause typically a character, a one by one that just sidesteps, right. He just goes beep boop, right. Just two squares forward. But if he gets carried by a two by two, that two by two then goes forward two squares and then that other character gets placed in front. So it's like a five square swing if that character was behind the Sentinel to start out with. Because then he get he gets moved out two and then placed in forward. So a, a sidestepping two by two is, is one of the most powerful, oh. I don't know, one of the most powerful game effects uh, like for a, positioning as far as like positioning yeah placement tool because yeah. you could place them five five squares yeah okay yeah i didn't never realize that yeah that's um that is very good and so yeah, I mean, if we look I mean, at essentially that, it's almost a tk right it's almost a tk for free yeah i mean they once they're carried though they can't make an action but still you're giving them you're you're moving them five squares and they're not they're not tokening up so it's really good. Yeah, as a rescue plan, I call I call it my rescue plan. Get somebody out of danger. Yeah, I mean you can attack with them first and then move them back five squares. That's <laughs> is, right. You got it. It's really good. Um, so I mean, Master Mold, he's got Pensai also with eight range. So if you get too close, he can make an attack um, with with some potency. Um, he has a stop. Well, he's he starts on a stop click. He's got Mastermind um, regeneration and toughness. Uh, he does have a Colossal Retaliation power, free if no other friendly character has been placed this turn. Choose an opposing character that attacked or damaged Master Mold since your last turn. 
place another friendly character with the sentinel and robot keywords such that it can make a close attack targeting the chosen character then do so so if you attack master mold and you miss um then you can take any one of your um sentinel slash robots and make a close attack with them um which really works good if your whole team is a sentinel team or even if um, you've generated a uh a sentinel um, these the bystanders actually have the sentinel and robot keywords on them so you can right. use them um and doesn't that uh, and doesn't that click the factory dial too once they hit if you switch over to the factory dial yes and if they hit it, it, it if you if they hit because they have the sentinel and robot keywords it clicks over the factory dial so any any character that has the sentinel and robot keywords if they deal damage to somebody from with it using an attack then you can click click the uh, factor dial over which is really good just don't forget that when you use once you generate from the factor dial make sure you reset it back to one <laughs> yeah back yeah to yeah one. um but yeah so the ma master mold is really cool i mean he basically just sits back he's he's just good by even because he has 25 he's 25 points and he's got leadership so he has leadership and outwit so he has leadership so um he's 25 point leadership is always good um he's got great keywords but then he you're, you're you you have to deal with him because he sits in the back and if you don't if you don't deal with him he's gonna eventually generate a cyclops sentinel and then you'll have that to deal with as well so yeah that's i think he's almost uh i think you i think you can't play one of those casual games where you have to play until you win like okay. you know you see you see folks playing those like big 2000 point battles and stuff and uh I, I think i think you could possibly never beat him <laughs> if somebody if somebody had a bucket full of sentinels right because uh um you know you play him at like 375 or 200 like he bypasses the prime rule on his uh generation right um, so you could generate multiple stealth sentinels, multiple omegas, um, and, and some of those long um, home games. So I, as far as competitive goes, but Master Mold is definitely my favorite new convention piece as well. So so let's take a look at um, Wonder Woman and Jumpa. Um, that's another con convention exclusive that came out. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little upset that she's not just called Wonder Woman, just so you can use her for giganta <laughs> you got it yeah um but um i mean that's okay it's not it's not that big of a deal i mean it's cool that she's wonder woman and jumpa because jumpa is her kangaroo i don't really know the storyline behind this um but uh you know she's on a kangaroo named jumpa uh and it's really flavorful um if we look at her text this is her at 75 points um i know jay solomon is happy because um she has the Justice Society keyword and Justice Society um, team ability. Um, I saw him post that on his Facebook. Um, but she has she's seventy five points. She's got zero range with a single target. She's got a load of keywords: Amazon, Animal, Deity, Justice League, Justice Society, Mystical, Past, and Trinity, um, which also means she has Latveria if you want. <laughs> um, yep. She's. Uh, She's got zero range with single target. She's 12, attack, 12 speed with a special, 12 attack with quake, 17 defense with a special power, and 3 damage with leadership. Um, she has improved movement, elevated, hindering, and characters, um, which is, I guess, because she's jumping around on a kangaroo. Um, she's got a trait, Lasso of Truth, incapacitate as free, with a ranged value of 4. I love, love that. That's, that's really cool. Okay. Um, then she's got another trait. The mighty Kangas can easily jump more than 50 feet into the air. Free if no friendly character has been placed this turn. Choose an opposing character within eight squares that dealt damage to a friendly character since your last turn. Place Wonder Woman and Jumpa adjacent to that char opposing character. Then she can use Force Blast at no cost targeting all adjacent opposing characters. And then she also has her speed power is charge, flurry, and force, force blast. Um, her defense power is energy, shield deflection, super senses, and toughness. So, I mean, that's kind of like a retail power, retaliation. Um, they have to be within eight squares, but it does not say line of fire. So, um, so as long as they're within eight squares and uh, 
they dealt damage to a friendly character, you can place Wonder Woman adjacent to that character. And you don't have to use the Force Blast. Um, it says you she can use Force Blast at no cost. But you can, if you want to place her and then use Flurry, you can do that instead because, um, right. you know, which is, it's up to you. And then since she has floor, Force Blast, you're still knocking them back because um, she has Force Blast yeah. um, on her speed power. So, um, so, I mean, it's up to you. She, there's a lot of cool options there. I think she's a fun figure. Uh, Dan, what do you think about Wonder Woman? Um, I think what's glaringly kind of sad to some of us is she was obviously a 2020 convention exclusive. Right. Um, and she's kind of glaringly missing the Wonder Woman team ability. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, so uh, is she competitive? Probably not. But is she fun and flavorful and a good looking sculpt? And absolutely. Just a, a fantastically fun piece. So uh, yeah. mine's actually on the way. So we're recording this morning. My my conventions are coming to me as they as the as my delivery driver is going home. I should say I call Excellent. it my delivery driver, but it's one of my buddies. So um, I, I will have uh, Wonder Woman and Jumpa in hand here shortly. Yeah, I'm, I, I I'm have... very I'm very excited to unbox her. Yeah, thanks to um. Some people that uh, hooked me up that went to Gen Con as well. I have all of all these exclusives. I have Master Mold already, um, but I, I have the rest of the exclusives coming from uh, PJ Bolin and from Lucas Van Holland. So thank you to them for uh, picking those up at Gen Con. Um, they should be coming. They're on their way as well. I'm excited to use them too. Uh, this is the Wonder Woman Jumpa at 25 points. Um she is, uh, I mean, as a retaliator, she's pretty cool. And she also has leadership for 25 points. So, right. um, you know, cheap leadership is always good. You can, you know, with all the different keywords she has, um, that works well. I mean, I don't know if it, Mystical has a cheaper leadership. Does Mystical have a cheaper leadership than 25? I don't like cheaper, but like Captain the Britons. Oh, uh, yeah, 30. Are, are like 30, yeah. But yeah. I mean, and, and then improved movement characters. I mean, she's just a really fun piece, right? I like improved movement characters probably the most as my favorite movement power. Yeah. Or movement ability. Um, so yeah, I, I think that just creates for more fun, right? Like, yeah. uh, and actually, she you're not going to you're not going to hear me say anything necessarily bad about this piece because I love Wonder Woman and Jumpa. I, I knew the story at one point, um, but uh, I've since forgotten it, and then it's on my list to go look back up, but. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's Wonder Woman. I mean, they ride uh, uh, horses, right? Typically in um, the Amazon when she's when she's at the mascara, uh -huh. um, and she's had sculpts on a horse before. So we know Wonder Woman's like a um, an accomplished um, shoot. What am I trying to say? An accomplished horse rider. There's a there's a technical term there, but so. Seeing her ride a kangaroo, you're right? She we she can ride anything, right? And do it very well according to the dial. So and I love the force blast is is very flavorful too. It's like the kangaroo's like kicking you and like Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I um love it. and, and uh, I mean she can actually retail and then instead of using her flurry right there, she can actually charge because she can move through characters and you could charge someone else and then flurry them. So that's kinda cool too. Yeah, and a good a good amount of reach with that piece that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at the next piece, which is Ultimate Warrior. I mean, are you a WWE fan, Dan? Yeah, I'm a wrestling fan. Um, you know, uh, on uh, the rest of the Clickstaff crew, we do get together a lot for the wrestling pay per views. Um, and uh, yeah, so I love all. I own all the WWE pieces. Uh, he's and Ultimate Warrior. Hey, I. He's neat. I mean, uh, do you think uh, he's like a good representation of Ultimate Warrior? Oh man, you know that that that's caused a little bit of controversy. I actually I've seen. heard, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I read a little controversy on that on Facebook, and uh, I I I don't know because man, I was I was probably I think Ultimate Warrior was in the eighties. I'm not like a deep deep wwe or wrestling fan i'm more of just a casual 
fan. Okay. Um, but uh, I I don't know. I guess right. I mean, like he, I think you know, so. They, I mean, he seems. I mean, he seems pretty good. I mean, Ultimate Warrior obviously was a really good wrestler. Um, I mean, he seems pretty good. I mean, I I, I just remember that WrestleMania six where he beat Hogan. You know. And that was like a, a really good matchup, you know, because like no one expected it, you know, like everybody was like, you know, is Warrior going to win this this one, you know, um, and uh, you know he was he was a classic, you know, Hall of Fame wrestler, just like just like Hulk, just like Macho Man, you know, um, Ultimate Warrior was really good. I, he he's got a lot of, you know, there's a lot of there's a big element of nostalgia with these WWE figures, right. um, so I like it. I, I like the fact that they gave him mystical and warrior keywords. Um, I mean, what can he do? So he's got, he's got that signature move, Gorilla, Gorilla Press Slam. So, um, close. If Ultimate Warrior has one action token, make a close attack. After resolutions, exchange squares with a hit character and give that character an action token. Um, he's got a speed power, lightning speed, which, uh, and then we'll talk about like what lightning speed does. Cause I had to look it up cause I haven't played WWE in a while. Um, when Ultimate Warrior uses it and hits once per turn, after resolutions, he can use Lightning Speed at no cost. So, um, and that works now. Well, it will work. Well, no, it actually works. It um, One's a power action, one's a free action. So, it's not, um, there's no, like, uh, double free or anything like that. Like, um, so you can actually do those in a row. Like, you can do the, the Lightning Speed and then you could do it again. They don't have right. to be like a different type. He doesn't have to be like carrying an object or anything. Um, so that those actually work together. And then he's got a uh, damage power, shake the ropes, perplex, but only to target himself. Once per turn when Ultimate Warrior uses it, if he's adjacent to plus two ropes, he may, two plus ropes, he may use it again. That would be cool. Would have been cool if you could select damage. But again, like you said, um, this was before, these were made before the rules change. Right. So, um, but it's still cool because he can up his attack by two. Um, right. Yeah, I would say, you know, it feels like most of the wrestling dials um, and the way the mechanics of the WWE work, the WWE powers, they all feel very thematic. Um, like you take his Gorilla Press Slam, right? You know, you... You will just watch the video. Just go to YouTube if anybody's curious how that wor- how that move works. That signature move, you know, they he attacks them and then they switch squares, right? I mean, that's it's very accurate mechanic wise. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot of thoughts of, yeah, I don't know, like how does high evolutionary side blast somebody for three, right? That's that's a pretty big. Uh, suspension of disbelief, right? That we have to do with comics. Um, but yeah. I think as far as actual mechanics of the real world go, the WWE figures do a fantastic job, or WizKids has done a fantastic job of translating that into Hero Click. So, you know, the, the dial length and some of that stuff people were kind of arguing about, but, uh, you know, the perplex being shake the ropes, right? I, as a competitive player, I'd like to see that shake the ropes at. Uh, you know, at, at top dial, but you yes. know, given the flavor text, it's meant to be. Um, it's meant to be a rally. I, I don't want to call it rally because that's an actual game mechanic, but like a hype, a hype mechanic. Like I've taken a little damage. I'm trying to get back into the thing here. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, I think I think it's a very well made and accurate, uh, you know, accurate dial to a wrestler. Now, is it accurate to Ultimate Warrior? I, I'm not educated enough on that to provide a good opinion, but it seems very thematic and accurate to me. Yeah, no, I mean, I uh, I like his repeated clotheslines, lightning speed, because, uh, you know, with Ultimate Warrior, you want to do, like, that grand entrance with him, like, use the grand entrance trait and have him come all the way up, um, and then... And then he can lightning speed from there. And then he, if he hits, he can lightning speed again. So that's kind of cool. I mean, the way lightning speed works is you can move three and you have improved movement characters. And then after you attack, you can move two, um, I think. Um, let's take a look at it because I have... That, I that sounds have right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, lightning speed, power, improve movement characters, move up to three squares, then make a close attack, then move up to two squares. 
So technically, you know, with him, he can move up to three, make a close attack, move up to two. Then after resolutions, he can do another lightning speed, as provided he hits. And then he can move up to three more squares, make a close attack, and then move up to two squares. So that's pretty good reach with him. Um, I I like that because in, in, you know, in, in WWE when he was wrestling, he used to like run down the ramp and like enter the ring and start slamming people right away. <laughs> so right. It's, it's just kind of cool. You know, like he, I, he seems like one of those figures where he could, ha- he should have like a full move charge that's only in a direct path or something like that. Like kind of like a juggernaut style, right? Um, like a uh, speed power. So I think I like the light, the double lightning speed here. Um, I think he's cool. I'm definitely going to use him. Um, I've been trying to think of a way to use all the WWE figures. Um, to make like some sort of like Royal Rumble format. I don't know if anybody's done that. If you if you have, you know, put it down in the in the just in the in the chat comments in the YouTube YouTube comments. Um, just a way to play with all these WWE figures and like some kind of some kind of WWE format, like maybe a Royal Rumble or something like that. Um, I'm still waiting waiting for the Wave Two figures. Um, I actually pre ordered all of them, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I technically have bought all the Wave Two figures. I don't know if they're coming or not, but uh, um, I'm excited for them when they do when they do get um, get printed or get made. I, w- uh, I will say my uh, my folks at Gen Con um, uh, pressed um, uh, Scott Scott D uh, for an answer and. Uh, Scott had nothing he could provide us. Yeah. Well, I, that's, yeah, I, I can understand that. He probably can't tell you if he knows. <laughs> right. If he, if he knows, he couldn't tell us. So, but, uh, uh, Jason, uh, Jason, my podcast partner, uh, he, he did, uh, kind of try to pry any information he could cause he's a huge wrestling fan. Um, and, uh, no, there was, there was nothing we could get out of him. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just like, I mean, I'm, I'm like a casual WWE fan like you. I do have my other friends that are more into it than I am. But, I mean, I I, uh, I just like the fact that they're different and they're so different and that they, you know, they have like their whole, their their own pack, their own PAC, and like they have their own powers and stuff that makes them, makes them very flavorful and fun to play casually. Um, let's take a look at Ghost Rider. Here's Ghost Rider at 150 points. Uh, for those of you who do not know this character, I actually read... Um, so this this character first appears in the Donny Cates um, Thanos Wins series. Um, so uh, Donny Cates is a comic book writer. He wrote, Th- he wrote Thanos. Um, he wrote Venom. Um, Ven- he's, very, he's pretty famous for his Venom series, but, but he also did a run on a, a solo uh, a comic entitled Thanos uh, Thanos Wins is the name of the series. Um, and in that comic, uh, there's like a future Thanos and a, and a um, you know, Thanos, um, or I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, Thanos or Thanos, um, but he encounters his future self and um, his future self has a, um, a cohort um, named Ghost Rider, but this this particular Ghost Rider is a herald was a herald of Galactus, and actually is ends up being Frank Castle, uh, the Punisher, as um, this cosmic Ghost Rider um, that has the power cosmic because he was a herald of Galactus. So um, this Ghost Rider here has the assassin cosmic future herald minions of Thanos. Monster, mystical, and soldier keywords. Um, his real name is Frank Castle. He's he's he was the Punisher turned into this this Ghost Rider Herald. Um, really cool figure. Um, really cool character in the comics. Um, he also is carrying like a little baby Thanos in his, because uh, I think he goes back in time to to try to uh, like he kidnaps Thanos as a baby <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um um. He's got 12, 12, 12 speed with hypersonic speed. He's a flyer, um, 12 attack, 19 defense with a special, 4 damage. Um, he does not have a damage power. 
He's got six range with dual target. Um, power, power cosmic team ability, which is now cosmic energy. Um, he has improved movement characters and um, improved targeting hindering. Um, he has a trait babysitter from hell. When a character within four squares is damaged by Ghost Rider, after resolutions, you may roll a d6. Four to six, move Ghost Rider up to four squares. Then uh, he has another trait, Cosmic Penance. When an opposing character attacks a friendly character after resolutions, give the attacker a Penance token. Um, so uh, he doesn't have to even hit. He just has to attack. So if an opposing character attacks, um, give that character a penance token. Power, make an attack targeting a single opposing character. Before making the attack roll, you may remove up to three penance tokens from the target. Modify attack and damage plus one for each penance token removed. If the attack hits after resolutions, heal Ghost Rider equal to the number of penance tokens removed. Um, does that combine with anything? Because it's a power action. So can he do that with, he can't do that with running shot or hypersonic speed or anything like that. Right. It just has to but be. It, but it does like combo with his, uh, um, side blast. Oh yeah, it does. Oh yeah. So it does combo with side blast. So that gives him a pretty high potential to deal some damage there. Yeah. Um, at 100 points, he starts with Psy Blast. He starts with Running Shot and Psy Blast. Um, so, you know, he's potentially dealing like a 12 for 5 or a 13 for 6 or a 13 for 5, um, depending on how many or even more, depending on how many penance tokens he's attacking with uh, or he's removing. Um, then his defense power is Energy Shield Deflection and Impervious. Okay. Um, so, um, I mean, I saw Scott Crampton, um, posted in critical clicks, something about how, um, he would, cause he's had this figure for a while now. Yeah. Um, how ghost rider at a hundred points and then you put the power gem on him. Um, nope. That's Thanos. Um, ghost rider at a hundred points, you put the power gem on him. He's got, he's dealing 12 for six penetrating. And then if you are making a power action with that cosmic penance trait, it's potentially a 13 for seven penetrating or even more. Um, yeah. Depending on how many penance tokens you're removing from the target. So, uh, and that's 110 points with a hundred points plus 10 points with the power gem. Uh, I mean, what do you think about ghost rider here? I know you said, no, I mean, it's powerful, but I think emperor gladiator is just, competitively way better yeah yeah um yeah i mean I, I don't think ghost rider i mean would you would you definitely play him in casual though like oh yeah like i mean because what we got the uh um we got the uh red hulk um ghost rider like the, the one a couple of years ago you know from top of the oh, red yeah, the, hulk the ghost rider spirit of vengeance um, yes that one like right that. so yeah. like casually for sure all the guys on bikes uh let me know yeah just you can play them all together and uh <laughs> you know it's just a fun team yeah i mean um, what would you uh would, what would you play him at 150 or 100 i'd play him at 150 i mean if i want to play casual i want to play him at his full beast beast value yeah what do you think about this Thanos? Let's take a look at Thanos. Um, Thanos is 150 points also. He's got six range dual target, power cosmic, nine speed with running shot, 12 attack with Pensai, 19 defense with invincible, four damage with a special. Um, his special is probability control, free, choose an opposing character within range and line of fire and give them the punishment token, man up maximum one. The character with the punishment token can't use probability control and attacks they make or targeting them can't be re-rolled except by Thanos' probability control. When Thanos deals damage to that character after resolutions remove the punishment token. Um, he also has colossal stamina. When Thanos KOs a character after resolutions, heal him one click 
and remove one of his action tokens, uh, which is synergistic with the Colossal Stamina because he can right. he can uh, take a damage from the Colossal Stamina and then after resolutions heal if he KO'd that character. Um, uh, he's got the Assassin, Cosmic, Eternal, and Monster keywords. Um, and what do you think is which one do you think is more interesting, the Thanos or the Ghost Rider? Um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Thanos, so I mean, casually and as a collector, I I mean, I like the Thanos. I mean, sculpt wise, Ghost Rider's cooler, but uh, um, I definitely like Thanos as a character better. Yeah, I mean, let me see if I could find the um, the Thanos. Um... Yeah, it was on their, it was on their Twitter. On WizKids Twitter. Oops, I didn't type in here. Replace. It's on the WizKids Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. Um, let me see. I don't. I can't find it right now, but. I mean, it's it's not. I, I think it's a fairly undynamic sculpt. If I'm yeah, being the sculpt honest. is. Uh, I kind of wish that the Thanos sculpt was a little bit better. I mean, it, it's just got Thanos, and he's like shooting red beams out of his eyes, kind of like Cyclops almost. Yeah. So, um, which I, I I don't I haven't seen that in the comics, but I mean, maybe maybe he does that sometimes. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. But, I'm not... but yeah, so th there you have it. You have I mean, we we looked at Wonder Woman Jumpa. I'm actually kind of most excited for this one, Wonder Woman and Jumpa. She seems like the most fun to play with. Um, I agree with you there. Ultimate Warrior. Ghost Rider. Um, and we looked at Thanos. And we looked at Master Mold. Master Mold I've played with. He is a lot of fun to play with. Um, but he's probably more on the competitive side. But you can use him casual too, for sure. Um... So, I mean, like we, we talked about it a little bit in the uh, the beginning of this episode, Dan. Um, like, how often have you been playing in person compared to online? Uh, recently, I, I think I've been pretty much uh, on uh, in person now. Um, I think I'm playing in an online tournament next weekend. Um, but, uh, I mean, that I'm going to greatly prefer in person at this point. Uh, we, we've started back our weekly events. Yeah. Um, in person, um, our whole, our whole play group is, you know, completely vaccinated and stuff. So. And that's, um, where is that? Is that, is that at Lucky Dice or is that in a different store? No, I'm about four hours from Lucky Dice. So, uh, my normal weekly play is at Big Bang Toys, Comics and Games in Owensboro, Kentucky. Okay. And you, you do weekly events there? like uh... Mostly, you know, we were every week pre-pandemic, but we've been almost every week since about mid-June, 1st of July. Um, so um, we, do our, uh, we do our fun, our fun foul stuff every week. That's always fun. Oh, yeah. I see. I've seen you post that before. So uh, you... Um... So is it? It's, it's meant to be casual, but you you kind of push the envelope with the casual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do, we do, right? So, um, you know, it was one of those things we started where you know, you know, sometimes we would fuss at each other, like, oh, you bought, you know, you brought too powerful of a team or whatever. And I said, you know what, guys, gals, we're gonna stop fussing about this each other about this stuff. We're just gonna put it up to the vote of our Facebook group. So, if uh, if y'all, uh, you know, if y'all get voted as a fun foul, then you take your fun foul um, and we move on. Right. So just no fussing anymore. Right. So just, you know, if you're willing to submit yourself to fun or fun foul of the public voting, then uh, uh, bring whatever, bring whatever you'd like. But remember, it's casual. Right? So I like that. I like that idea. That's a really fun idea. And so and uh, um do you are you still doing online tournaments too? Like, have you been playing in online events, uh, Rock Online, or 
Has have, have, the, have has Rock been doing um, online tournaments recently? Or? No, Rock hasn't. I think Brad, uh, the Bradcast stuff is about the only one that's been doing regular online stuff. Yes, I know he um, does that. Yeah, and uh, but no, I've just been using it for practice um, more so than anything. Now that you know, we've had some bigger events in person. Like we had one in, I had one in July, and um, you know, just a lucky dice just last weekend. So. Great. Okay. Oh, and so my last question for, I guess for today, cause we've, we've kind of gone over a, a lot of stuff. So just, to, you know, if you've been watching at home and if you missed anything, um, earlier in the episode, we talked about Dan's, um, bat doom team that he went eight and O and won the rock mega event with, um, at Huntsville, Alabama at lucky dice cafe. And we talked in detail about his team and about his um, experience at that tournament. And then we talked about the convention exclusives that just came out. Wonder Woman, Jumpa, Ultimate Warrior, Ghost Rider, and Thanos, and also Master Mold. Um, so we talked about those figures. And um, I mean, it's just like for my last question, I mean, have you been watching What If? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, I don't, you know, spoiler alert for anybody who's not caught up. But I mean, I guess uh, if um, Dan, I mean, what was uh, your favorite episode? Oh, man. Um, I, I, this is hard for me to say, cause I love all things comics. I, I love everything that they've adapted. I love, I love all superhero movies, right? I don't say whether or not they're good or bad. I'm just glad that they've devoted resources to making some of my favorite things on the big screen. Um, so, uh, as far as favorite goes, I, I'm a huge Iron Man fan, so I'm, I'm going to have to say this most recent one with uh, Killmonger and uh, and Iron Man. Yeah, that one was that one was interesting and cool. I mean, what do you what are your feelings on? Because all right, this is what I noticed about the What If series, and I want to know what you think of this aspect of it. A lot of the episodes kind of end with a cliffhanger, or they don't actually give you any closure as to you know. Does the world end or like, like what happens next? Well, is that, is that on purpose? Like, I mean, what well, do you, that, what do you think about that? Yeah. I, but that's how a lot of comic books end. Right. There, right. there's a lot of comic series that just end and you have to fill in the blanks yourself. Uh -huh. There's, they leave you with kind of an overarching assumption on how things will go and i think that's what the what if series has done and that's what a lot of comics do is they leave you with an assumption or direction that that story is likely to take and uh, personally I, I think it's a very good adaptation of a lot of comic books to um to an animated series so i personally like it and enjoy it i know a lot of folks don't um but, uh, you know, part of it is not knowing the ending is is a style of filmmaking that uh, is intriguing and, and is is, a, is neat. I, I like it. I think it's well done. Yeah. And I think the series is just so well done. I mean, the, the animation is beautiful. Um, the way they the, I, I don't know what that style is of drawing, like the cell cell dr animation or something like that. But I mean, it's really, really well animated. The voice acting, I mean, they use voice actors from like the actual movies. Um, a lot of them, a lot of them are actual, actually from the Marvel movies and TV shows and stuff. So um, the voice acting is really good. Um, everything's really good about this. And, you know, for me, I've always been like a DC animated fan. Um, I always preferred the DC animation. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Marvel guy, like as far as comics, you know, the, you know, people ask, you know, are you a Marvel guy or a DC guy? I'm more of a Marvel guy, um, but I always liked Batman the Animated Series yep. and Justice League Unlimited and all the cartoons that, uh, even the cartoon movies, like, you know, um, uh, from uh, from DC, just because the voice acting was so good. I mean, you had um, Kevin Conroy, um, the, uh, the uh, you know, the guy who voiced Batman, and you had, like, uh, obviously yeah. Mark, Mark Hamill as Joker and, like, all the all the all the voice actors for DC were just so good compared to Marvel. I feel like, but I mean, I feel like Marvel's really stepped up their game now um, with uh, with the animated, uh, especially with What If. It's just really good. You know, I I'll be honest. I am exactly 
in line with you there. Marvel guy, have always loved the DC animated stuff. We've been catching up on that new stuff on HBO Max, on DC animated. And DC animated has been leagues ahead of Marvel animated for quite some time. And Marvel's closing the gap with what if. They're closing the gap. Yeah. And so like if you were going to I mean if you were going to make a figure, like let's say you got a chance to design a figure um again, right? Cuz you you won the world championships. You actually design did you did you get a chance to design a figure or No, so I won the Rock World Championship. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um I got to design a you map. You got to design a map, right? Your your the the, the Pal Farm map. Yeah, I did the Pal Farm map and from 17 and then my 2018 map uh was Mr. Chomp Swamp. Oh, it was. Okay, I didn't even realize that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um yeah, those are great maps. Um and then uh but uh let's say you got to design a figure and you were going to design it after like a recent Marvel property like uh WandaVision, Falcon Winter Soldier, Loki, um What If, um or even Shang-Chi that just came out, like what would you design? Like what would you pick? Um well, like just a figure of itself um or even if you wanted a set to come out for a certain property what would be like the best property ooh. for a set i mean i i think i would i would probably like to uh design a two by I don't, I, spoiler alert okay <laughs> all right i would like to design a, a two by two uh dragon from shang chi oh okay yeah yeah the um well, the, the guardian dragon, the good the good guy dragon. Oh, the good guy dragon. Okay. All yeah, right. not not the dweller in darkness. The 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 good guy dragon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Cool. Cool. That. Yeah, that's a definitely definitely a big spoiler alert there. But uh, but right. Um, yeah, I did say that very clearly. Spoiler alert. Yes, we said that. We said that. Okay. <laughs> well, but, they, uh, they showed they showed a yeah they uh, anyways. Well, I mean. It's been out for it's been out over two weeks, so technically we're we're not doing a, a nerd disservice at this point. So okay, good, good. Um, yeah. Um, I, so, but but that that's hopefully that's really you've cool. seen it, right? You you included I, it, so I hope you've seen I, it. I saw it. I saw it in the in a at a drive-in theater. So when okay, it came, good, when it good, came good. out, so I didn't um, I didn't spoil anything for you personally. But so. te- you didn't spoil for me. But technically, um, technically, it does not come out because I, I I looked it up. It doesn't come out on HBO Max until like October. So I don't know. I don't know how many people watching have right. seen it have seen it yet. But um, yeah. Oh well. <laughs> I mean, technically, I think it's theatrical release as long as you don't talk about it for two weeks afterwards. Then, um, then you're we're, good. We're not. We're not breaking the unspoken <laughs> nerd rules, so um, I, we, we're we're technically in the clear. So, and we said spoiler alert like three times. So, yes, yes, okay, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Dan, for coming on the show. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, great talking with you about your bathroom team and about your uh, recent experience at the Rock Mega event and about the Con Les. Uh, and uh, just in general, talking about hero clicks and Marvel stuff. So uh, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks Uh, for having me. And um, uh, don't forget everybody to uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And and, uh, keep tuning in for more content about Heroclix. And don't forget everybody, wake up and smell the clicks.